We are so glad that you have joined us today. I am Pastor Josh. I am the next generation pastor here at FBC Rankin. And uh, you get to be a part of something pretty unique and something pretty special. Uh, the reason that I'm going to be talking to you today is because we have been planning something that we do pretty much every year for our students, middle school and high school, which is something called D-NOW. If you're not familiar with what D-NOW is, it stands for Disciple Now. And every year we do it, and it is a weekend-long event where we, we do everything for them. We have entertainment for them. They get a, a shirt just like this. Uh, we have games. We have prizes. Uh, we have a guest speaker that comes in. We have a band that comes in that is just for students. And we spend the entire weekend helping them uh, grow in their relationship with God and their relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's why it is Disciple Now. And we're taking the time for them to just pause on the world, pause in their lives, and just give a weekend to work on their relationship with God and how they can grow in their relationship with Christ. And as we get ready to do that this Sunday, we're doing something a little bit unique that we've, we've not done before here. And we're actually going to do something that I've never done before, which is uh, on Sunday morning, we're going to cap off the D-Now weekend with our students doing a student-led Sunday morning service. They're going to do all of it. Uh, they're going to be doing the, the praise and worship as the student praise band that we have every Sunday night. They're going to perform and they're going to lead worship. Um, in the main service. We're going to have students working in the tech department. We're going to have students that are going to be uh, greeters. We're going to have students that are going to be doing prayers and scripture readings and testimonies. And the one thing that we've never done before, and I've never done even, is uh, for the past about three weeks, I've been working with two of our uh, students, two seniors that are graduating, that have both said that they would like to go into and they feel God's calling to go into full-time ministry. And so what we've done is I've sat down with them and we've worked together and we've put some things together that we're going to be doing a joint sermon where all three of us are going to take one aspect of the sermon and deliver that message to the congregation. So uh, being here, you're going to miss out on something pretty, pretty unique. Uh, two of those, the two students that we're going to use are going to be uh, Aaron. Uh, he is the guy representative who is the senior. And we're going to be using uh, Kennedy, who is the female representative. And both of them, like I said, feel that God has called them into full-time ministry. So this is a great opportunity for them to share the message. As you can see, they're, they're not here with me right now. So I'm going to take a little bit when I deliver the message today and uh, fill in their parts for you. Uh, and... That way you still get the gist of what's going on and you kind of get the whole message, but you're just not going to get the full experience. So we're expecting a really great turnout for this weekend. We're expecting God to do some amazing things. But with that being said, let me talk to you about what we've been dealing with in our next gen high school, middle school student ministry. We tend to do things a little bit organized. We like to have a plan of attack. We like to have a progression of things. And so what we do is we have been working on something for the past month that has been working towards this D-Now weekend. As you can see, the theme for D-Now this year, 2022, is shine. And what that is, is how do we shine? How do we shine as Christians in a dark world? Because I think all of us can agree that the world is a pretty dark place. So as a young Christian or as a, a Christian who has been in the faith and as a young person, and it even... For us as adults, how do we go and shine in a dark world? What does that mean? What does it look like? How do we even start? Where do we begin? Because in church, we like to throw these phrases around and we never really like to define them. And we never really like to really put something to them that we can cling to and say, am I doing this? Am I following what scripture says? Am I doing what God has commanded? And so we want to clarify that for our young people. We want to clarify that for our students because they go into their high schools, their middle schools, week in, week out. They're on sports teams. They're in dance clubs. They're in cheer. They're in band. They are in all these other things where they are connected and rubbing elbows with other teenagers that are frankly, simply lost. So as a believer in Jesus Christ, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, which is a better term, how do they shine within that dark world and in that dark place to where they can show people the gospel? And so we have been working for the past month. We've been doing a series called Distinct. What does it mean to be distinct? What does it mean that God has made us 
distinct. And we started by talking about Christ. We started talking about Jesus himself. He was extremely distinct and unique. For one, he was God in the flesh, 100% man, 100% deity, here on earth for us. That made him distinct. What made him even more distinct is that he is the only answer, he is the only connection to a perfect and holy God for us, sin-filled human beings. He's the only way that we can have a relationship with a perfect holy God. That makes him very distinct. It makes him distinct from any other deity that has ever been brought up or proclaimed or whatever. The other part that makes him very distinct is Yes, he did die and pay for our sins, and he was hung on a cross, and he was buried in a tomb. But as of today, he is the only one who has ever risen from the dead, and that makes him extremely unique. No one has ever been able to claim that simple task, that simple concept. He is the only one who's ever done it. That's what makes him our Lord and Savior. That's what makes him the one that we all believe in and we trust in because he has done something that no one has ever done, ever, in the history of existence. And so, as we've been looking what makes us distinct, we started with who Christ was, and then we had a conversation on a Sunday night, and if your high schooler doesn't come to our Sunday night uh, student services, I highly encourage you to send them to, or encourage them to come to our Sunday night student uh, worship service, because we have a worship service designed for our high schoolers specifically for them. It is just for them. It is in their world, and it is we deal with topics that they're dealing with, and we open up God's Word, and we grow, and we stretch. We talk about the things that nobody else wants to talk about. We talk about sex. We talk about drugs. We talk about relationships. We talk about when you're hurting. We talk about your future. We talk about all these things that nobody really wants to deal with. But we look at it through the view of God's word. What does God say? Not my opinion or your parents' opinion. What does God say? Because that's what matters and that's what they're going to be held accountable to. So as we have been going through this, we, we talked about Christ. But then we found out that they are unique. That God made them distinct. And he made them with a specific plan and a specific purpose. And that as soon as they can possibly start... They need to pro be proactive about asking God, what do you want me to do with my life? Like, I accepted you as my personal Savior. I've given you my life, so what are your plans for my life? And the reason that's important is because what we found out through opening God's Word, and what I've been able to share with them, is that before they were born, God created them a certain way with particular skills and gifts and attributes and abilities to make them distinct from everyone else, to make them unique from everyone else. And the reason he did that, because God just doesn't do stuff for whatever reason, he has a purpose, is because he has a plan, but he has a specific plan for their life. And he made them a certain way to fit into this certain plan, into this certain groove, to do a certain task, to accomplish a certain goal. And so many times we get our our, as teenagers, we encourage them to, man, look for your future. Try to get good grades so you can go to a good school and you can get a good job. and you can. But none of us ever tell them, hey, listen, why don't you stop? Take some time. Get alone with God. And let Him tell you what He designed you to be. Because we don't want them to grow up and to be frustrated. We don't want them to feel like they've wasted their life. We don't want them... Every parent wants their kid to be successful. And if they can be successful in the spiritual things, those are the eternal things. Those are the things that can go on forever. And so we're going to look at some of this today. We're going to talk about some of this stuff. We've already looked at how Jesus was distinct. We've talked about how our students are distinct, but so are you. Every single one of us were made distinct. And some of us have never, ever sat down and asked God, what's your plan for my life? And I've talked with some senior adults, I've talked with people that are middle-aged, and they've all said, listen, I wish, I wish I would have asked God sooner, what do you want me to do? Because I feel like I wasted, I wasted so much of my time doing the things that I wanted. Butting my head up against the wall, trying to make things happen. When God gave me gifts and ability that could, I could have chosen a much simpler path and made Him happy. Not that the path they chose was wrong or bad or ugly or they, they have regrets, that's not what they're talking about. They're saying, I wish I would have given God more of what he gave me, which is this life. I wish I would have shared it with him. 
I wish I would have done what he asked me to do. And man, this adventure that he has planned for me, do you know what I could have done if I would have used my, my young years when I, I was feeling energetic and I, I was brave to conquer anything and I wasn't, I wasn't being like, well, now I have kids and a mortgage and all this other stuff. Man, I wish I could have just blazed a trail for God. But I promise you, I'm going to take whatever I've got left and that's what I'm doing with it. I'm going to blaze a trail for God. So I've been asking him, what do you want me to do? So that's what we're going to look at today. What we're going to do is the, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to read a passage there, and then we're also going to go, and we're going to be in 1 Peter for a little bit. But in 1 Corinthians, let me give you a little bit of a background. It was written by the Apostle Paul to the church at Corinth. And Paul, if you don't know anything about Paul, his first name was Saul. And as Saul, he would go around, and he had a very unique job, very distinct personality and quirks about him that made him who he was, and God made him that way, even knowing he was going to do this. But as Saul, he would go around and he would hunt down and he would imprison Christ followers. At some instances, he would even have them killed. He would murder them just for following Christ. And he was very, very good at his job. He was, he was one of the world's best, for lack of better terms, assassins. And he would find these, these new disciples of Jesus Christ. He'd hunt them down, imprison them, or murder them. And then one day, he has an encounter with Jesus Christ that changes everything. And he goes from Saul to Paul. And then as Paul, he, take, he took all of those same attributes and gifts and things that made him distinct and unique that God made him before he was even born and that he was using to, to fight Christ and his disciples. And he completely flipped it 180 and goes to the other side. And now God is using those same attributes, skills, and qualities and traits that made him distinct to spread the gospel. And he was very, very good at it. He was even better at that than he was at being an assassin. He found the path that God had him on. He found the plan that God had him on. He was able to fulfill the goals that God wanted him to fulfill because he made him a certain way and he fit perfectly into it. Now, none of it was easy. None of it was easy. It was all hard. But God made him that way and he made him to endure it. So we're in 1 Corinthians. And the reason it's called 1 Corinthians is because it is a letter to the church at Corinth. So he is writing to the people, the Corinthians. He had planted a church there. And if you know anything about the church at Corinth, they got confused about a lot of things. They had some blind spots and areas. They, would try to, they tried to mend the old with the new and bring it together and try to make their own kind of church, religious, Christianity sort of mutant monster. And all the time, Paul had to go back and say, hey guys, let me, let me just help you out a little bit. Let me, let me tell you and let me instruct you in the things that are of Christ and the things that are of God and what you should look like. So we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we are going to be reading verses 1 through 11. Read it with me. I'm going to be reading from a New King James. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one of the prophet of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one had the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually 
as he wills. And you say, all right, Pastor Josh, why are you using this passage? Why are we looking at this passage? What does this have to do? And as you can see, Paul is telling them, listen, you guys are working on something here. You guys are putting some stuff together, but let me clarify some things. The same spirit that you started this thing with, that, that Christ, the Holy Spirit, right? The same spirit came down and he has given gifts to every single one of us. The way he made me unique, he made you unique. The way he made me distinct, he made you distinct. The way that you are is exactly the way that God wants you to be. And he has given you gifts. He has given you abilities. He has given you talents. He has done all of these things because he has a plan. But here's what they were doing in the church at Corinth. They were saying, listen, I have this gift or I have this ability or I have this talent which the Spirit has given me. And that is more important than the one that you have. I have a more important gift. I have a more important talent. I am on a hierarchy. I am higher than you. And yours is not as good. So you are down here. And they're starting to put in, for lack of better terms, a pecking order. Saying, hey, I am more holy than you. Hey, I am more spiritual than you. Because look at the gifts that God has given me. And what Paul was saying is, hey, listen, time out, guys. That is not what this is all about. You have to understand that every single day you must die to yourself. You must understand that every single day that it is not about you. Like you are the very, very least part of this whole equation. Yes, God made you unique. And yes, God made you distinct. And yes, he has a plan for you. And yes, he made you have different abilities than he had someone else have. But you are just the vessel. You are just the tool. You are just the thing to be used to get God's mission accomplished. Don't ever think that one of you or a bunch of you are better than anyone else in the entire church. That is not the church. The church is a body. Last week when we were talking to the teenagers, we did the illustration that Paul had given them about the body. Listen, the hand is the hand and it has a job. But if the hand says, I don't want to be a hand, I want to be a foot, it cannot do what a foot can do. Your eyes are your eyes, and it doesn't matter how bad they want to be your mouth. Your eyes can never taste anything, and your mouth can never see anything. What Paul is saying is, listen, each organ has its own gift and its own ability, and it does it extremely well, so do yours very well. Quit trying to be something that you're not. Don't think that your vision is way more important than your smell or your taste. Don't think that if you can do miracles or you can do healings, that that's way more important than you just having a tender heart and and caring about people. Listen, you take the things that God gave you and the way he built you, and man, you do that to the best of your ability, and you don't worry about what anyone else is doing. You let them do their thing. You let them do what God has them to do, because here's the key. Just because we are the same body and just because we are trying to do the, the Lord's work, the Lord has different plans for each one of us. And you may have to go this direction and they may have to go this direction and they may have to reach this person who you could never reach and you may have to reach this person who they could never reach. And that's because God built you that way. When we talked to the teenagers last week, I let them know one of the things that we do as humans, especially as Christians, is when we look at ourselves, we always see the negatives first. And I told them, why don't you lean into the things that are positive? You do have positive skills and abilities and traits. It's just hard for you to see them as a teenager. Some adults struggle with it as well. So I'm going to challenge you. Look and find what are your abilities? What are your talents? What are your skills? What comes easily to you? See, that's how you're going to find your gifts. And you'll be like, all right, I don't understand. Listen, Josh, I'm really athletic. How how am I going to use that as a, how is that a gift or an ability that I can use for the Lord? And that's the conversation you have with him. You go, look, Josh, I'm really, really intelligent. Look, Josh, I'm really, really good with numbers and finance. Look, I'm really, really good at prayer. I'm really, really good at caring about people. And I enjoy it. Like, you enjoy those things. Those are your gifts, your talents, and your abilities. And that's where God wants you to have the conversation. God, I don't see how this is going to work. How am I going to use this skill? How am I going to use this ability for you? How am I going to use this for you? And that is where he is the master of thinking outside of the box. We may not see it, but he wants us to have that conversation with him so we can find it. And then we go, oh my gosh, we're on the cusp of something amazing here. 
And then you get to do the things that you were designed to do, that you were built to do, for the creator that you want to do them for and you want to serve him. And then you find joy and happiness and peace all within serving. Because at the very end of all of this, here is the amazing thing. When we start to read that God has made us unique and he's made us distinct and he's, he's built us a certain way to do a certain job, what we find out is that our creator is absolutely amazing. And we tend to be very, uh, very narrow visioned in who we are. But here's the cool part. God gave us all of those things and did all of those things for us and built us the way he did for one purpose and one purpose only to serve Him, simply to serve Him. I mean, that is absolutely amazing. He knows that us serving Him with the gifts and the abilities that He gave us and He built us for, He designed us not to fail. He designed us to be successful in His plan. So many of us tend to think that we have these abilities and the gifts and, and man, they're for us. They're not for us. They're for everyone but us. We are just the tools. We are just the vessels. And the people who get it, the people who grasp it and go, I am just a tool to be used. But man, you get me in the right spot and you get, I ask God what he wants me to do, get out of the way because man, I can do a lot of really good things. There was something that in doing this research and trying to put this message together and like I said, Kennedy's going to do a portion of this, and she's got some things she's going to add, and uh, Aaron has some things that he's going to add to this and some things that he's going to uh, present to everybody and share with everybody in his findings and his studies. But there was one thing, and I was doing my research and finding this. I found a quote um, that I think just fits this absolutely perfect, and it's absolutely amazing. Here's the quote. I think it sums up this entire message. Everyone has the two most important days in their life, the day that they are born and the day they find out why. And that's by Mark Twain. I know I, I, was, I was hoping that it would have been somebody biblical, it would have been somebody that I could tie right. I was hoping really it would have been Paul, but it was Mark Twain. Everyone has two very important days, the day that they're born and the day they find out why. I think so many of us struggle and search for that why. Why am I here? Why did God make me? Why did he make me the way he made me? And the reason you do that is because you can only see your flaws. But I'm telling you, you have some amazing abilities and amazing gifts and amazing talents within you. And they're there. And you, deep down, you know what they are. So ask God, what do you want me to do with these? Where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to reach? What's your plan? What's your goal? Because, man, I want to get there. I want to do it. And I pray that every single one of us, everybody who hears this, anybody who reads this passage, anybody who is a part of Dean now, our students, I hope and pray that this passage becomes reality and I pray that this quote becomes reality. It's an amazing thing that you're born. God said the world, he's going to create the world and he wants you to be in it because he has a plan for you. So that is absolutely amazing. The day you're born, but finding out why, why was I born? Why was I born when I was born? Why was I born where I was born? Why was I given to the parents that I had? Why was I put in the situations I was in? And it all leads down to that one single thing that we talked about. Because God made you a certain way to do a certain job to serve him. So I hope that was encouraging to you. It was encouraging to me. I know that it's been encouraging to our students, the feedback I get from them during the week saying, Pastor Josh, man, that really hit me hard. I'm going to spend some time talking with God, trying to find out where he wants me to go and what he wants me to do. Man, Pastor Josh, I didn't like that. It really, it really pushed me out of my comfort zone. And they know not to say that because I'll tell them we do our best work outside of our comfort zone. That's where God stretches us. That's where God pulls us. That's where God teaches us when we are outside that comfort bubble. So let God stretch you. So I want to encourage you as I get ready to close, have that conversation with God. Seek out what your skills, abilities, talents are, and have a conversation with God. What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? 
How do I find your plan? And just be consistent. God, show me the way. God, show me the way. And he'll probably show you one step at a time. One step at a time. So just take every day one step at a time. Thanks. I hope this was great for you. And we hope to see you come visit us in person. Uh, every Sunday we have a great worship service and we would love to see you there. Have a great afternoon, rest of your day. Jesus, our redemption, our salvation is in his blood. Jesus, light of heaven, friend forever, his kingdom come. Oh